Good morning. Thank you all. Uh, thrilled and exhilarated to be here on this monumental occasion of uh, this recognition, retrospective. Today I need to speak first on Sun Ra, who posed questions fundamental to the riddle of black ontologies, bleak and blue musicologies, oblique and interstellar strategies, dark matters, and those even darker gravity-repulsing universe-expanding energies. I especially need to address the Ra who rhetorically asked, if you're not a reality, whose myth are you? And if you're not a myth, then whose reality are you? Sun Ra actually refused to recognize a difference between the two, which is why he designated his band a myth science orchestra, a V rocket engineering territory band in the boat of Ra. Like Thornton Dow, Ra knew his unlimited energy fields of ultraviolet, psionic, and telemetric vision were as real as the trouble we seen. Like blackface minstrelsy's greatest frontman, Burt Williams, who could outdress and out-philosophize Cornell West when he wasn't sporting cork grease and mesmerizing fools with mute elegance on Broadway. Like that Williams, Sun Ra believed the American Negro was masterful at pretending to be nobody and at playing dead. The same son of Birmingham, Alabama, the former Herman Poole Blount, rechristened himself Sun Ra, a.k.a. Le Sony Ra, when he began a long career as a pre-Egyptian extraterrestrial big band leader from Saturn. Saturn. The same Sun Ra also addressed another fundamental mystery of black existence when he composed pieces such as My Brother the Wind and Astro Blacks and the Nubians of Plutonia and Odes to Saturn, Jupiter, and Mars. If you're not a reality, then whose myth are you? In whose light do you shine? your own or some other mother's blood-stained son. Sun Ra once surrounded his vis visage with a historical constellation of stargazing cosmologists whose ranks included Copernicus, Galileo, Tycho Bray, Leonardo da Vinci. You can see this imagery on an ESP album of Ra's called The Heliocentric Worlds of Sun Ra. For as long as my people have been shackled to this land, they have refused to believe that a captive body auto automatically and autonomically meant one had to have a captive imagination, or that to be treated like a beast of burden was to be unburdened with intellectual, poetic, visual, musical, military, and ethical impulses. This notion that just because some psychotic group or group of madmen imagines an African man or woman to be a mule or a hoe or a plow doesn't mean that that African man or woman can't think or act in terms of metaphor, metamorphosis, and metempsychosis. What you call graffiti, Ramel Z called iconoclast panzerism, the armoring of the alpha beta against the distorted trick knowledge of biologically diseased organisms in the mode of the 14th century Gothic monks, monks who made lettering so dense the Catholic Church had to shut them down for daring to make the icon signify louder than the Pope. PLO style, Buddha monks with the Al Yao. Even under the whip or in the train yards, my people always knew there was more than one way to change into a cat or moonwalk like an Egyptian. Hellhounds on the trailways, Miles runs the voodoo down home is where the hatred is, Illmatic ready to die in the wool, a scanner darkly, a real died in the wool, scanner darkly, where the rubber meets the road and Philip K. Dick freestyling on the wings of song to the beat of a difference engine named Thornton Dow. But I also need to address County Cullen today. I really, really need to recite from the book of County Cullen, reiterate those elemental questions he posed to the boogie's deepest, darkest existential dilemmas when he pondered, what is Africa to me? Copper sun or scarlet sea, jungle star or jungle track, strong bronze men or regal black, women from whose loins I sprang when the birds of Eden sang, one three centuries removed from the scenes his father's love, spicy grove, cinnamon tree. What is Africa to me? I got to also rap on the culling of another poem, the one where he mulled, yet do I marvel at this curious thing, to make a poet, poet black and bid him sing. Cullen also famously waxed the following ultimate lyrics on the troubling state of his Christian heathen divided double consciousness quaint, outlandish heathen gods, black men fashioned out of rods, clay and brittle bits of stone, in a likeness like their own. My conversion came high-priced, I belong to Jesus Christ, preacher of humility, heathen gods are naught 
to me. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, so I make an idle boast. Jesus of the twice turned cheek, Lamb of God, although I speak with my mouth thus in my heart, do I play a double part? Ever at thy glowing altar must my heart grow sick and fall to wishing he I serve were black, thinking then it would not lack precedent of pain to guide it, let who would or might deride it. Surely then this flesh would know yours had borne a kindred woe. Lord, I fashion dark gods too, daring even to give you dark, despairing features where, crowned with dark, rebellious hair, patience wavers just so much as mortal grief compels, while touches quick and hot of anger rise to smitten cheek and weary eyes. Lord, forgive me if my need, patience wavers just so much as mortal grief compels, while touches quick and hot of anger rise to smitten cheek and weary eyes. Lord, forgive me if my need sometimes shapes a human creed. Lord, I fashion dark gods too. If you're not a myth, then whose reality are you? Lord, forgive me if my need sometimes shapes a human creed. If you're not a reality, then whose myth are you? Would Cullen have felt so split if he had known about the syncretic, syncretic hoodoo church, the original black church, ancient to the future? Would he have felt so betwixt, betwixt and between Africa and his blue-eyed Jesus if he'd known about the mojo handiwork of Thornton Dow, Lonnie Holly, Joe Minter, and others of Alabama and the Southern Black Visionaries who do reconstructivist imaginations. Double your consciousness, double your fun, has been the reply of the hoodoo imagination and the hollering bebop ghost of America, our own homegrown technici technicians of the sacred in Jerome Rothenberg's term. The folks who made ritual look like interior decorating and lawn ornamentation into a form of incantation and genetic dream engineering. Minnie Ripperton knew what was up when she sang about living on the edge of a dream. Jimi Hendrix knew what was going down when he sang, if I don't see you no more in this world, I'll meet you in the next one. Don't be late. Smokey Robinson was right on time when he sang how his kind of love was more than age or time could ever destroy, and of a love that, that would take a hundred lifetimes before anything could wear it down or tear it down. There are people who considered black love as a helix of semi-precious radioactive isotopes as brilliant and as enduring as the energy of the sun. The Art Ensemble of Chicago knew their serious B, doggone astronomy, when they spoke of the people of the sun guided away from the gray haze of the ghost world by the left big toe and the right big foot of Odwalla. Duke Ellington was writing ambient music in the 1930s when he wrote the tune Harlem Air Shaft, a vision dedicated to the vaporous sounds and smells that freely assembled and congregated between the walls of urban tenements. Nobody knew better than Nat Turner, who had a dream of rebellion and massacre born out of visions of angels dripping blood on cornfields and imagined formulas for making dynamite and paper that were thought to be scientifically sound. Nat Turner was a performance artist, a flash mob specialist who knew how to incite the bloods with prophecy and small axes. Ain't no black like, <laughs> ain't no place. Like the black unconscious chance the Harlem playwright Lisa Jones and her work Combination Skin. Later on, more than a century after Nat, out of that deep dark well also came Marie Laveau, hoodoo queen of New Orleans, and High John the Conqueror Root and Bo Dilly. The same Bo who let his lady love know he got a cobra snake for a necktie and could walk 47 miles of barbed wire, use a cobra snake for a necktie, and got him a brand new house on the roadside made out of a rattlesnake hide with a brand new chimney on top made out of human skulls. And after you tell Arlene all that, he say, now come on, darling, let's take a little walk. Tell me, who do you love? Who do you love? Can a metronome know the thunder or summon a god? Ishmael Reed once asked this question in reference to the rhythmic methodologies of jazz versus those of European concert music. Can a metronome know the thunder or summon a god? If you want to catch the Holy Ghost, you may want to choose a rider named Art Blakey over the one they call Wagner even given how crunk ride of the Valkyrie sounds in Apocalypse Now. In hoodoo, to do the damn thing is to do the work that brings the thunder and the rain and can summon the power of gods with the most humble of man-made artifacts, reconstructivist, repossessioned, and visitated. Thornton Dow knows, like Damon, David Hammonds knows, that if you make art out of things that have been run through your people's fingers, you're already way ahead of the mimetic game when it comes to representing reconfigurating the power of the culture and effigy and imagery. Dow knows that the challenge is to accurately render the power of things unseen but not unforeseen within the dark tower of the African imagination. Ain't no place more technical or widescreen scope than the black unconscious and the hoodoo imaginary. 
The science of real myth-making demands the capacity to see the energy in all things held together by electromagnetism and then to raise the visual and sonic profile of that energy till it vibrates within the visible and audible light spectrum. Within, whether within white cubes or jungle brush, hoodoo transcendentalism must burn with the light of a thousand suns. Thorndahl is an amplifier of dark energy, comes from a whole region and tradition of folk who had seen the opposition's bandwidth of perception and had never been too impressed with the room decor. So what we're always looking at when we look at Thornton Dial's work is a magnification of that force that made singer Andy Bay wonder, when you're fast asleep, what is it that's lighting up the dreams you see? What great painters do better than anyone else is to make you experience the intensity of the way they experience the molecular and quantum spectrum of light wave energy, how that rainbow and Crayola pot blocks they keep inside glows in the dark and even the daytime to those gifted with uncommon sight and insight. When you look at Mr. Dial's work, remember that the reason everything is so luminous is because he's a cat put here to bear witness to the residual dark epidermal energies coming off of even polyurethane, styrofoam, and polymer backbones. If he could plug you directly into his neurological and optical nerve system, he wouldn't have to paint or draw, weld, or sculpt you a picture. If he could meld your aura, aura with his own, you'd likely go supernova and then collapse into an invisible point on some galactic star map. Some folks speak of the universe, the macroverse, and the micro, but I like to believe Mr. Dial, like his Alabama compatriot, Sun Ra, knows that we exist in a multifold omniverse where everything is everything and all things being equal, all things possess a palpable and magnetic soul. I keep coming back to visit Mr. Dial, Dial's work because he understood understands what George Clinton meant when he said that we are just a biological speculation sitting here vibrating and we know not what we are vibrating upon and the animal instinct in me tells me to live when I know it's my time to die. Because if you're any kind of artist, you can't help but function as a gauge of what connects the biological, that, I'll start over. Because if you're any kind of artist, you can't help but function as a gauge of what connects that biological speculation to the vibrations you constantly feel yourself being rocked upon a gauge, a guide, a messenger of those vibrations and a kind of electron microscope too, an amplifier of the source material of all that we know to be material, a technician of the sacred and a midwife of the sacred too, a hoodoo doctor at play in the poppy fields and African violets of love, a purple rain man if you will. Quantum physics tells us finally what has been known in Africa and Asia for millennia, that the world we imagine we can see is just a hallucination constructed out of the limits of our feeble brain's limited capacity to process too much invisible stimuli. It generally takes massive destructive events like the sudden demolition of the Twin Towers or the aftermath of a tsunami for us to recognize how fragile and ephemeral the hard material world we sleepwalk around in is. It takes catastrophe for, us, catastrophe for us to recognize how easily erased the world of organized and particulate matter is compared to the world of waves, light waves, electromagnetic, electromagnetic waves, sound waves, oceanic waves, ultraviolet waves, emotional waves, the tides of lust, greed, and envy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What makes one a hoodoo artist as opposed to, say, just a hood artist is that you're not just trying to keep it real, but surreal and aboriginal too that you're only interested in the forms of things as containment fields, signposts, and poetic gestures and guides into the truth behind the mirror. The hard truths of the mythic principles and mythopoeic poetic propositions that granulate the tactile and the optical with deeper, darker shades of blue meaning and jazz sensibility. This is what, this is what it means to pursue the path of illumination in America, to, to not get so caught up in the surface ugly as to dim your own connection to the polychromatic transformations of the inert and the ineffable possible by your own free hand, your own free black hands. Thornton Dow knew that like the alchemist Shakespeare knew when he told Hamlet to tell Horatio that there are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in your philosophy, dude. This is not to say that Thornton Dow's work isn't work of great aesthetic and ethical and political intention, intervention and counter supremacist intuition and humanism, or that it doesn't deserve a place among the pantheon of people in the Western world of uh, of other people who paint and weld and sculpt and whose artifacts change the temperature in the room by simply being there and lessen the velocity of entropy and heat death our culture seems to thrive on. It is simply to say that I totally understood why when Bill Arnett took Dow the moment, a Dow turned to him at the end after viewing all the contents within and, and still waiting to be impressed said, so that's it? Because when you work with tradition, 
When you work within a tradition where the point is to know the thunder and to summon a few gods with the work, and when you know yourself to be a cowboy in the boat of Ra's myth science orchestra, you can't settle for white cubes and wall ornaments to be the be all and end all of visual accomplishment. So that the question has never been whether dial is good enough for moment. The question has always been mother made him, mother had him, and barring that moment, well, just F him. Oh, the utter negrosity of it all. Thank you.